folks. In my last review, I mentioned how after the release of Sonic 2, Sega was hard at work developing the next main Sonic game. The title that they were making was, of course, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. However, Sega kind of ran into a bit of a delay. Long story short, Sonic 3 and Knuckles was much bigger than the previous games that they've worked on, so they needed more time for that dish to cook. Sega felt, though, that they needed to give the fans something to tie them over until Sonic 3 & Knuckles was finished. Now, I've already talked about Sonic Spinball and the Sega Technical Institute's creation of that game, but as I mentioned in my last review, Sega had approached another company along with STI to also make a spin-off Sonic title. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Here's a little fun fact. Both Mean Bean Machine and Spinball came out at relatively the same time, only three days apart from each other, with Spinball coming out on November 23rd, 1993, and Mean Bean Machine on November 26th, 1993. That was a pretty good decision. Well from, at least from a business perspective, to release two Sonic games around the Christmas season, not only tidying the fans over for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but also getting an inflow of seasonal cash. Anything that I review, provided of course that there's enough substantial research material, this title has a nice little development story. It should be noted that Mean Beam Machine is actually a converted and localized version of a different Genesis game called Puyo Puyo, only released in Japan. Puyo Puyo is part of a series of puzzle games that started in 1991, and there are still titles released today. Now, from what I've heard, these games, this one in particular, are quite story-driven, but I don't know what it involves because I can't find any English translated ROMs on the internet. Maybe some of y'all would know where to go because I actually do want to cover this and other Puyo Puyo games in the future, and a vast majority of them were only released in Japan. Anyway, the company that we have to thank for this game was a little-known team of devs called Compile, now, they already had plans to release their Puyo Puyo game in America, but they halted on that plan because they weren't sure if the game would go over well here. Fortunately, Sega was there to offer Compile a deal to make a game for them as they completed their work on Sonic 3 and Knuckles. After being prospected by Sega to make a game for the Christmas season, Compile decided to take what was already a finished game and tweak it a bit for Western gamers. The game was overhauled in such a way so that it would appeal to Sonic fans, though it should be known that Sonic himself doesn't even show up in this game. Yeah, the main star this time around is Robotnik, hence the title. Of course, he's still the main villain, but Mean Beam Machine was made to center around him. Also, there were some music changes. Some of the tunes from Puyo Puyo were left in, but some were taken out and replaced by a few new tracks. After being put on shelves, Mean Beam Machine was met with critical acclaim. Gamers loved it, and it's still considered a Genesis classic today. Hell, Sonic Mania even paid tribute to Mean Beam Machine in one of the boss levels of that game. So without further ado, let's see how well this title holds up today. Now, unlike many other classic Sonic games, this one doesn't start off with that SEGA tune at the beginning, but we do get a funny little cutscene at the title screen. I should also note that Mean Beam Machine surprisingly has a plot, which is kinda weird to me. I'm not, Shasta. It's just that Mean Bee Machine is a puzzle game, and I'm of the opinion that puzzle games don't really need stories. Oh, shut up. I never said that the story was bad. I just said it wasn't needed.
Another thing that I should acknowledge about Meme Bee Machine is that, like Spinball, this title is also based off of a Sonic cartoon. The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, to be more specific. This was a cartoon that aired around the same time as Sonic Sat AM, but unlike Sat AM, which had a darker atmosphere, Adventures was more silly and lighthearted. Again, I will go over this and other Sonic-related animations in the future, but I will say this about Adventures. It's stupid and nonsensical, but in a good way! Think of a Sonic cartoon if made by Ren and Stimpy creator John Kay. Anyway, the plot of this game goes like this. Robotnik is, yet again, kidnapping small and defenseless critters and turning them into robots so that he can take over the world. However, he's not capturing animals this time around. Instead, he's capturing sentient jelly beans from the nearby town of Beanville and forcing them into his mean bean steaming machine. After putting his devious schemes into motion, Robotnik sends his henchmen Grounder, Scratch, Coconuts, and nine others to round up and imprison as many remaining beam folk as they can. This is where you come in. Yeah, the game decides to break the fourth wall, and as it turns out, you are the potential savior of the beam folk, and by extension, Mobius. The story of Mean Beam Machine is pretty damn good and well thought out. But, as I said before, this is a puzzle game, and as far as my opinions go, puzzle games needn't have stories. The gameplay is kinda like Tetris, but you're faced against the CPU, and there's more of an emphasis on combos. Also, unlike Tetris, you don't have to make a straight line from wall to wall. Instead, you match up these colored beans with other similar colored beans. When four or more beans are connected, they disappear, and these gray colored beans, known as trash, fall onto your opponent's side. But watch out, because the same can be done to you. Combos are a necessity in beating a level. In order to get combos, you have to arrange your beans in such a way so that when one group of beans disappear, other similarly colored beans drop down together. This triggers the aforementioned combo that caused another set of beans to group and disappear, and so on. You do this right, and your rival's play area gets filled with trash. Stay alert, though, because the CPU can just as easily get combos and fill your side with trash. Once the opponent's side is filled to capacity with beans and trash, you win. But if your side is full, you lose. And that's the gameplay. I know it seems pretty straightforward, but Mean Bean Machine is anything but easy. There are 13 stages, and they each get progressively harder the further you go. The first couple of stages aren't so hard, but every other level after stage 3 is murder. The CPU is also quite smart. You'll be figuring out your game plan, and the AI has already thought out in advance in ways to screw you. Another thing that happens in later stages is that beans start falling down faster, which means you have to plan things out faster. Oh, but your rival has no problems with this at all. It should be known that Meme Beam Machine has gone down in gaming history as a very difficult puzzle game. In fact, it's ranked number 8 on GameFAQ's hardest Genesis puzzle games list. Fortunately, the devs were gracious enough to give you Infinite Continues. Another awesome feature is, say you want to quit your game for a while and pick it back up for another time. Well, that option is available to you via one of the shortest and sweetest password systems ever conceived by video game developers. I should be perfectly honest with you folks, I haven't really beaten this game, neither in the past or even right now. One thing that I find pretty unremarkable in this game is the music. Now, these are not bad tunes, I just find them to be... slightly generic. I mean, they're good enough, sure, but I've heard better songs in the NES Tetris games. One tune that I truly detest in Mean Bee Machine is the You Are In Danger tune. Hey, you want to know what's worse than running out of room to play stuff in a puzzle game? Well, how about an obnoxious song that emphasizes the fact that you're running out of room? 
I cannot even begin to tell you folks how this fucking song right here played a major role in causing me to lose in a stage and then having to start the goddamn thing over again. It still does it to me today. I mean, was this tune really that necessary? I don't think it was. It actually happens to be a pet peeve of mine, because far too many puzzle games have a similar feature. my mind. That still doesn't excuse the fact that it's an irritating feature. The visuals in Meme Bee Machine are colorful and cartoony, much like the show that it's based off of. As I mentioned earlier, there are 13 stages, each with a specific badnik that you face as a rival. What's cool about this is that each of these characters have appeared at least once in the Adventures cartoon. Hell, four of these characters were co-stars in the show. To me, this shows that the devs at Compile cared about this game. They knew that most of the people who were going to get this title had already seen Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. It was not only a good way to localize their Puyo Puyo game, but it was also a good marketing strategy. The cartoon itself had only been airing for roughly two months up to Mean Bean Machine's release, so it was perfect timing. I also like how they gave the bad guys different expressions depending on if they're winning or if they're losing. Sure, it's a pretty small detail, but one that I commend nonetheless. Like any good puzzle game, Mean Bean Machine is hella addictive. Despite the fact that I lose a lot in this game, it doesn't stop me from trying again, and then again and again. There is definitely an addiction factor for Mean Bean Machine, and that fact is made even more apparent with The Infinite Continues. This game just doesn't want you to put it down. I used to play this game quite a bit when I was a kid, and I used to spend hours trying to get as far as I could. I usually only couldn't get as far as level 4 though. Anyway, Mean Beam Machine is a pretty invigorating game. It gets those cogs in the brain going. In my opinion, puzzle games need to be like that. I've played quite a few puzzle games in my time, and I've come across a few that don't exactly stimulate the brain too much. A good example would be Mickey's Ultimate Challenge. Jesus, what a boring and mind-numbing game. Well, folks, I think Shasta and I have gone over enough things in this game, but I do have a few parting thoughts. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is a Genesis classic. This game, along with Tetris, was one of the titles that got me into puzzle games. I don't mention it often, but I actually really like puzzle games. Yeah, besides FPSs, RPGs, and platformers, puzzlers are one of my favorite genres. I'll be more forthright with y'all folks, so... Meme Bean Machine was only the second puzzle game I ever played. The first was the Atari version of Tetris on the NES. But I don't lie when I say that this was a game that got me hooked on puzzlers. Had it not have been for this game, and Tetris, I probably wouldn't have played great games like Busta Move, The Lost Vikings, Columns, and Lemmings. This was one of the games that introduced me to a genre. I may never beat it, but I don't care. I'll probably be playing Meme Bean Machine up into my golden years. It's fun, it's addictive, and it's a classic that stuck out for one of my all-time favorite consoles. So with that, I give Meme Bean Machine a G for good. If you're into puzzle games, don't overlook this one. I guarantee you'll have a blast with it. Okay, what about you, Shasta? Got any final thoughts for the good folks watching?
folks, it's time for this old cowboy and his trusty canine to hang their hats up for the day. But we'll both be back soon enough. I think it's time we play a Super NES game now. See you, folks, and y'all come back now, alright? <laughs>